Black Jaguar, Pantera Onca, crouches in a pool of water in Brazil. Black Jaguars are also called Black Panthers, which is an umbrella term for any big cat with a black coat. The Jaguar says here, the main focus of this entry will be the Jaguar, but it should be noted that the Black Panther is actually the same species as the Jaguar. Okay, again, it should be noted that the Black Panther is actually the same species as the jaguar. The black coat is simply a color variation. African and American panthers have different black genes. In jaguars, the black coloration is a dominant gene. Again, in jaguars, the black coloration is a dominant gene. What does that mean, people? Meaning that only one copy of the alle allele is needed to express that color. However, in leopards, which are from Africa, right? Black coloration is a recessive gene. All right, so a leopard would need have to have two copies of the allele to be black. Molecular genetics and evolution of melanism in the cat family. In the institution's laboratory of genomic diversity, National Institute of Health, Department of Biology, University of Maryland, College Park, Maryland, Nestle Purina Pet Care Company. Melanism in the domestic cat, Felis cactus, is inherited as a recessive trait. So melanism, you know, the color black, the coat of a domestic cat is a recessive trait they inherit. Suggesting a goatee acid as a candidate gene, whereas a dominant inheritance pattern has been reported for melanism in the jaguar, Pantera onca. All right, so the, this gene that causes the melanism in, in big cats or in cats in general, it's dominant with the jaguar, the Pantera onca, which is native to America. So what does that tell you? All right, where is it older? Where does it originate this trait, this gene? Again, a black panther is the melanistic color variant of the big cat species. In Asia and Africa, they are leopards, pantera pardus. And those in the Americas are black jaguars, pantera onca. Again, we just read that the gene, which makes the coat black or the melanism in big cats, is dominant in the Pantera Onca, the Jaguars. Melanism in the American Jaguar is conferred by a dominant allele. In the Leopard of Asia and Africa, it is conferred by a recessive allele. So I just wanted to point this out because, you know, when we're talking about Black Panther, we got to realize there is no species as a Black Panther. They're just talking about either a Black Leopard or a Black Jaguar or even uh, I believe some mountain lions could be dark, I believe, but um, it's generally a leopard or a jaguar. So, you know, how do we know when we're talking about a jaguar or a leopard? What I'm jaguar is a Native American word meaning he who kills with one blow. All right. He who kills with one blow. That's what jaguar. Means. All right. So uh, just real quick regarding he who kills with one blow. Now we're going to talk about one of the abilities of uh, Black Panther. 
uh, from Marble and says here, due to being royalty of a strong nation like Wakanda, T'Challa was raised from a very young age how to fight. He was trained and groomed to be a warrior. We're going to see later on who were also in, in America warriors and how they dressed. Every day he would learn new techniques and fighting styles that would help him to defend himself from enemy attackers. Decades, decades of training have allowed him to master all fighting styles on the planet. His fighting skills are so impressive that he was able to uh, best Captain America in combat. Better yet, he took down Wolverine without breaking sweat. And neither of those men are terrible fighters. Black Panther is nearly unbeatable and is strong enough to take out a foe with a single blow to the head. As shown in Black Panther Volume 4, Number 20. So again, it says that Black Panther can kill with one blow, single blow. And again, in Native America... Uh, Jaguar means he who kills with one blow, just like Black Panther can take out a foe with a single blow. So the Marvel Black Panther was trained since young to be a warrior, right? So it says here, to become an eagle warrior or a Jaguar warrior was not easy. Training started at a very early age. The Aztecs had a tough education system. Young boys were tra trained in fighting, battle tactics, killing and most importantly, taken captives. The entire Aztec society was structured to simply be better at warfare than anybody else. The existence and purpose of the males focused on being a great warrior, just like the Wakandians. At the age of 17, John Aztec men became warriors and entered formal military training. Aztec warriors could move up in ranking by capturing enemies to be eligible to join the eagles or jaguars a man had to capture four prisoners in battle eagle warriors were adorned in the eagle feathers and wore headgear with an eagle head on it their faces looking out from the open beak jaguars wore suits made from the pelts of pumas in parentheses jaguars and associated themselves with their god of night all right so see how important this jaguar god is and they even dress like him right just like the black panther the jaguar actually originated in north america right so originally jaguars were in north america though now it only lives in central and parts of south america the jaguar moved south when central america formed into the land a land bridge jaguars prefer habitats like jungles and swamps but also like semi-arid mountainous regions so long as the area is forested. The jaguar is also one of the few cats to like water and often can be seen playing in it, all right? So water doesn't phase a jaguar. You'll see it hunting in rivers, you know, grabbing, you know, anacondas and snakes and alligators and all kinds of things. As for the mythology and legends, the jaguar was seen in a, as a god in Peru, all right? So it was seen as a god in Peru. Mexico and Guatemala in pre-Columbian America. So we know again about the god, uh, the panther god, right? That the uh, Wakandians held, uh, admired or worshipped, right? The, the, which they get their powers from, the panther god. And they have all those statues there. So as you can see, the jaguar, which is again, same species as the black panther, was also a god in Peru, Mexico and Guatemala in pre-Columbian America, all of Mesoamerica. Says the Mayans and Aztecs and Inca all worshipped the jaguar in some form, just like the Wakod, Wakandians and their black panther god. In the pantheon, the jaguar god was second only to the snake god in religious importance, the dracon. At the temple of the jaguar at Chichen Itza, the king had to walk beneath a frieze of procession of jaguars during his coronation ceremony. So some kind of ritual involving jaguars when the king had to become a king, right? Just like almost in Wakanda, they, you know, the whole coronation involves the Black Panther, right? As in this case, the jaguar. In Maya mythology, the jaguar was seen as the ruler of the underworld and as such a symbol of the night sun and darkness. There were Mayan priests called Balam, who officiated at only the most important ceremonies. So again, 
We just read in Mayan mythology that the jaguar is the ruler of the underworld. So returning to uh, the story in Marvel regarding Black Panther says here in Fantastic Four 607, 608, something big happened for Black Panther. No longer was he just king of Wakanda. He was also the king of the dead. Because of this, he gained a lot of new powers that enhance his adventures as a superhero. Among these powers, the darkest of the bunch is necromancy. Due to his new and shiny title, Black Panther is able to command armies of the undead. Right, so he's able to command the armies of the undead, something a ruler of the underworld could do, right? As shown in Secret Wars number 7, they will bend to his will and fight whatever battles he orders them to. He even managed to control the spirits of Necropolis and force them to help him fight back, fight against the dark villain. Along with the Aztecs and Mayans, the Inca also built temples to the Jaguar. Okay, the Inca also. The Jaguar is representative of power, ferocity, and valor. He is the embodiment of aggressiveness. For some, the Jaguar represents the power to face one's fears or to confront one's enemies. However, they are also associated with vision, which means both their ability to see during the night and to look into the dark parts of the human heart. And regarding the vision of the Jaguar and how the Maya saw it, uh, from Marvel again we read, As if that weren't impressive enough, T'Challa can see different spectrums of light, including ultraviolet light. This ability allows him to see in total darkness, giving him the upper hand against any invader that would try and and get to Wakanda during the nighttime. This also factors into his tracking capability. He is one of the best trackers in the Marvel Universe. The Jaguar often warns of disaster. He does not offer any reassurance. Along with physical vision, Jaguars are also associated with pre-science and the foreknowledge of things to come. Right, so advance technology maybe advanced science right cats have binocular vision meaning each eye can work by itself which provides them with better depth perception this gives more evidence of their connection with vision and foresight you remember like the mexica as the aztecs called themselves the people of tlaxcala also had an elite infantry divided into eagle and jaguar warriors. Working in ceramic, Angel Seren designs and creates an original mask of such a jaguar warrior. His headdress surrounds, surrounding the face and fierce fangs. This original mask is inspired by Tla Huicol, a renowned warrior, the art artisan says. Depicted in the Florentine Codex, as well as in historic paintings, the Jaguar warrior comes to life in ceramic. Angel Seren portrays the warrior wearing the Jaguar's paws on his hands, as well as a mask that represents the fierce spotted cat. These fighting men formed one of the elite divisions of the Aztec army. Black Panther is the ultimate human predator, a peerless hunter and fighter. T'Challa utilizes supreme intellect, strategic brilliance, physical perfection, and hard-earned combat skills in the service of his beloved Wakanda and the world. Jaguars in Mesoamerican Cultures The representation of jaguars in Mesoamerican cultures has a long history with iconographic examples dating back to at least the mid-formative period of Mesoamerican chronology. The jaguar, Pantera Onca, is an animal with a prominent association and appearance in the cultures and belief systems of pre-Columbian Mesoamerican societies in the New World, similar to the line Pantera Leo and Tiger Pantera Tigris in the Old World. Quick, agile, and powerful enough to take down the largest prey in the jungle, the jaguar is the largest of the big cats in the Americas and one of the most efficient and aggressive predators, endowed with a spotted coat and well adapted for the jungle, hunting either in the trees or water, making it one of the few felines tolerant of water. The jaguar was and remains revered among the indigenous Americans who lived closely with the jaguar. All major Mesoamerican civilizations prominently featured a jaguar god, and for many such as the Olmec, the jaguar was an important part of 
shamanism all right so you know the jaguar was a god and was very important in a ritualistic shamanism spirituality all right so you can see how that kind of correlates with uh, wakanda and how they had their panther god and also the shaman who assisted in the uh, coronation in the process of uh, when t'challa uh, you know needed to become had to become the black panther it says here in the surviving olmec archaeological record jaguars are rarely portrayed naturalistically but rather with a combination of a feline and human characteristics again so these j jaguars and olmec archaeological records they're hardly seen in their natural form as an animal but rather combined as a human so like a human jaguar or like a like the black panther of marvel right these feline anthropomorphic figures may range from a human figure with slight jaguar characteristics to depictions of shamanistic transformations in the so-called transformative pose kneeling with hands on knees to figures that are nearly completely feline so they're talking about they're gonna get we're gonna get into it is basically the wear jaguars or a, you know how they transform like a werewolf they have to wear jaguars one of the most prominent distinctive and enigmatic olmec designs to appear in the archaeological record has been the were wear jaguar the so-called wear jaguar motives runs through much of olmec art from the smallest jade to some of the largest basalt statues, the motif is found inscribed on celts, boltes, axes, masks, and on elongated man figurines. Also termed somewhat more neutrally the composite anthropomorph, or the rain baby. The were jaguar's body is shown as baby or childlike. It, its eyes are almond shaped or occasionally slit like. Its nose is human. Its downturned mouth is open, as if in the mid squat. Squall. The upper lip is averted and toothless gums are often visible. All mic motives associated with the wear jaguars include a cleft on the head of or headdresses, a headband and cross bars. Transformation figures. Many other all mic figurines combine human and animal features, including these wear eagle left. Although figurines showing such combinations of features are generally termed transformation figures. Some research argue that they represent humans in animal masks or animal suits, while others state that they likely represent shamans. This transformation figure displays bat-like features. Most common, however, is the jaguar transformation figure, which show a wide variety of styles ranging from human-like figurines to those that are almost completely jaguar, and several where the subject appears to be in a stage of transformation. Continuing, it says, one early team that was identified was the half-man, half-jaguar form known as the were-jaguars. The were-jaguar is most easily identified by its human-like form combined with a downturned mouth, an elongated feline snout, and a cleft head. This is exemplified by the basalt head found in the Museo Regional de Antropología at Villahermosa which clearly marries the head of a man with the mouth of a jaguar. This example also features an X-shaped cross in its right eye, which is a common glyph in Olmec art. Again, so it's telling us that the X is a common glyph in Olmec art. Is that an X or a cross? Right? Is that Paleo-Hebrew they're talking about? Is that the top? The meaning of the X is not entirely clear, so they don't know what the X means. We have to dig on that as it is used in many different contexts and research hasn't settled on a single meaning. Here it would seem most obvious that it symbolizes blindness or death of the eye. However, it could mean the complete opposite, for the X is often seen as the attire of the wear jaguar. So X is often seen as the attire of the wear jaguar, an X or a cross, and other deities where it is believed to symbolize the underworld, with the jaguar having been revered for its nocturnal prowess. It may be the X signifies the ability to see in the darkness of the underworld. Maybe, huh? All right, so can we link um, humans transforming to panthers, right? Black panthers or jaguars and Native American mythology and religion and tradition? Yes, we can. Just like in the story of Marvel, the Black Panther, a human becoming a panther. 
and again, Native American symbols and meanings for the Black Panther center on jaguars, a word that roughly means kills in one blow, just like the Black Panther can kill with one single blow. This creature's original habitat was in North America, but it slowly moved southward, which is why we find stories in Mexico and Peru. Both these regions uplifted Jaguar as a god. Both Mexico and Peru, where you find all these pyramids and ancient civilizations of America, uplifted Jaguar as a god, a deity, right? Supernatural. Often associated with the underworld. And this divine cat played an integral role in coronation rites. All right? This panther, right? Which centers on the Jaguar, played an integral role in coronation rites, just like in the movie Black Panther, right? As it says here, now I know this isn't the Wakanda from the comics, but at least you know the origin of the name, just like the origin of the name Black Panther, comes from the Lombies County Freedom Organization, LFCO, also known as the Black Panther Party, created by Stockley, Carmichael in Alabama in 1965 using the Black Panther as its logo. Yes, it started in Alabama, not California, in 1965. What is the significance about this? Well, the uh, Black Panther uh, character from Marvel, well, as it says here, it says it's a fictional superhero appearing in American comic books published by the Marvel Comics. The character was created by writer-editor Stan Lee and writer-artist Jack Kirby, first appearing in Fantastic Four, issue number 52, cover dated July 1966, a year later uh, that the group in Alabama, the Black Panther Party, was formed. A year later, all right? So returning to the founding of the Black Panther Party in Alabama, it says here, beginning in uh, 1965, Nelson joined scores of fellow black Lundy's County residents and attended mass meetings at Mount Gillard Baptist Church off U.S. Route 80. The House of Worship was a natural gathering place for the local African-American community, and it doubled as a way to skirt a draconian injunction that barred more than two black people from speaking together in a public place. Within the relatively safe confines of that humble country church they absorbed lessons about the goals of the struggle for equal rights and how to organize for change delivered via speeches by black civil rights leaders like stokely carmichael and huey newton today these giants of civil rights history are remembered as two of the founding fathers of the black panther party which may many believe originated in oakland california in october 1966 but the true roots of the Black Panther Party go back to the poor, rural county Nelson has called home her entire life. And um, again, so Black Panther Party started in 1965 in Alabama, one year before Black Panther character was created and came out in Marvel. So, I mean, I went to their website and regarding the panther god bass we talked about earlier in the video they don't even hide it man i mean this image right here they put on top of uh all these uh marvel comic books in the background looks just like almost just like the old black panther party logo as you can see so you know they're playing games but you gotta understand now your history and that all these stories all these fables all these uh, Hollywood productions are about you. Can it all just be coincidence? No, you gotta understand where Marvel and all these people, all these writers for these comic books, all these movies, right? They get their inspiration from. So again, thank you for taking this journey with me. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all the support, all my followers, all the comments. Much love, much ahab to all of you. Shalom. Awah.